Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my portrait of Michelle Pfeiffer from the movie Lady Hawk. It's a little bit unusual but I like the reference. We have some slightly warmer tones and a darker scene and I'm going to show you how I did it. Now as always if you like my content don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and if you want to see more content and longer videos you should check out my Patreon. For this, I used the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils as usual, and as usual, I worked on a 1000 grit sandpaper. So let's get to it. First, I'm going to do a, a little bit of the sketch, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my materials. So the size of the paper is a little bit smaller, just like with the Kevin Costner portrait. I'm going to be doing a series of portraits on that format and with these materials. Now, as I've already mentioned, I'm going to be using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. And as you can see, these are mostly going to be warmer orangey and yellowish colors with a few browns, uh, but a few blacks as well. Now, in addition to the Faber-Castell Polychromos black colored pencil, I'm also using the Kohino silky black pencils. These are a little bit darker I feel and they're especially a bit darker when I put them or layer them on top of some other pencils so that's one of the reasons why I like to use them. Uh, the surface like I said is a regular sandpaper, it's a 1000 grit sandpaper that you can buy anywhere, it's cheap, it works, it's as good as artist quality uh, sandpapers. So now let's get on with the drawing process. I have to do a bit of the background first. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, uh, when you have a background, you want to work from top to bottom and from left to right if you're right-handed right like me. You want to do that to minimize smudging. And uh, the other reason is that uh, background the, the background will dictate the amount of value and the colors that you will use on your main subject as well because I want to establish some contrast between the main subject and the background and the colors are, I, I achieve in the background are going to help me gauge uh, what kind of colors I'm going to use on my main subject and how much value I'm going to need in different parts of the on the portrait. Now for the background here I used a combination of colors it's mostly going to be a fairly dark background but in addition to the black color pencil I also used a dull reddish color that is uh, called Caput Morton in the Faber-Castell range and if you're using a different brand of course you have to pick uh, different colors you have to pick equivalents of the colors that I'm using but uh, I've used quite a number of orangey or yellowish orange colors here and I can't really be bothered to list all of them because I honestly didn't keep track I just uh, sort of went from the dark ones to the lighter ones as I created the highlights on her face. Now the f the face here will be very interesting because of the because of the range of colors. the The scene takes place indoors, and the light is coming from the fire. Obviously, that's why she will have a yellowish glow on her face. Some very very warm colors and I'll put the reference photo in the description if you want to examine it because it's a it's a little bit unusual in terms of the in terms of the colors that you're going to need to achieve the skin tone here I'm not going to be using any of the of the usual colors that you would normally use for the skin tone because like I said I want I will want to create much warmer much warmer tones I'm moving on to my main subject here now that I've done the part of the background that I t intended to do first. I did a little bit at the top and most of the left side. So I'm moving on to the main subject. Now I'm going to be drawing some hair here. I'm drawing some fly away 
hairs and flyaway segments on the left side and here the hair will be a little bit darker than the background. So my background has a little bit of variation in terms of value. Some parts are a little bit lighter and others are a little bit darker. In some parts of the background, the background is going to be darker than the main subject. In some, in other parts, like here, the the parts of the main subject are going to be darker than the background. So it's important to, to try to find ways to create that contrast so that the subject would stand out. Um, her hair in this movie is kind of short and a little bit uh, a little bit less feminine I suppose. Most men like longer hair but I really thought that this was an interesting looking reference photo mostly because of the lighting of course it will also be very important to try to capture the likeness of the actress this is a portrait or a picture from her younger days and as we all know she was a very pretty actress uh, best known for her role in the movie Scarface probably where she played the character of Elvira and uh, I was actually thinking about doing uh, I was actually thinking about using a reference from that movie but I wasn't really happy I wasn't really happy with the with the reference photos so eventually I picked this one mostly because of the nice contrast between the colors and, uh, and the lighting I slowed down a little bit and I zoomed in a little bit so that you can see some of the details I'm starting to work on the facial features now there is something that I have to explain which you're going to see me doing a lot throughout this drawing process I use a black colored pencil for the darker areas a lot uh, a lot of artists don't really recommend this and they don't like to use black I love using black and I have no problem combining it with other colors and one of the things that's making my job easier is this surface the sanded surface grinds down on the pigment and it allows you to blend colors more easily and that's why it's so much easier for me to achieve very dark tones by putting down a little bit of the black colored pencil first and then just adding some other colors around it or on top of it it's very easy and it works and the colors are close enough to the colors that I'm trying to achieve I mean uh, you would never really be able to uh, when you're working on a colored pencil drawing you're never really able to achieve the exact same tones the exact same colors and you really shouldn't worry about it in the first place now I want to talk a little bit about the face and the colors that I'm going to use here uh, I'm going to start from some of the darker tones. You can see that I've already established some of the shadow areas on the left side of the face and the shadow that is coming from the nose, uh, that, that the nose is casting to the left. And um, on top of that I used some reddish tones. The color that I used first was a brownish color that was a burnt uh, what was it? It was a burnt sienna, I think. And then on top of that, I used some reddish tones such as cadmium red and then some uh, orange because I have a couple of different orange colored pencils. And I'm sort of moving from the darker ones to, to the lighter ones and uh, the lightest part of the forehead is going to be here uh, just uh, a little bit to the right of the middle because the light source is coming from the front and her face is half turned to the left so the highlight, the lightest point of the portrait is going to be this part of the forehead above, her, above the eye on the right which is her left eye but it's to our right and you can see that here I'm using lighter and lighter colors and I lay down the darker ones first and then I work on top of them 
with uh, lighter ones. This is a better way to work if you want to minimize the amount of texture. And I want to achieve a fairly smooth looking skin. So when you work from dark to light, uh, the lighter colors, uh, when you use them on top of the darker ones, uh, they sort of blend things together and make smoother transitions, smoother gradients with less texture. If I were to do it the other way around by putting down the lighter colors first and then putting the darker ones on, on top of that, that would actually create a bit more texture than, than the way I did it. So I deliberately went from dark to light and now uh, I'm putting some of the lightest yellowish colors that I have on this highlight area or on this lighter part of the of the forehead. Now when you're doing portraits or any other subject for that matter uh, a lot of artists would recommend that you establish the larger contrasts first, that you establish the larger relationships first and that you go from larger uh, elements, larger details to the smaller details. That doesn't always have to be the case. I like to work segment by segment. So here for example I shaded the forehead and then I'm just going to do a little bit more work on the eyes and then I'm going to shade another large section of the face and I'm sort of going to be moving segment by segment as I'm shading the face and then eventually I'll make some adjustments both to the details and to the uh, overall amount of value uh, that I need in different parts of the face. Here just under the hair under the bangs here I'm putting some putting some shadow because the hair is casting a bit of shadow down onto the forehead area and uh, with the hair I also like to work from dark to light moving on to the to the eye here the pupil is obviously one of the darkest details on the on the portrait and then there's a nice catch light in the eye now the rest of the eyeball can't remain uh, as light as the catch light it has to be a little bit darker because the entire eye, eye is in the shadow so the eyeball is also in the shadow and uh, I have to create slightly darker tones even though the whites of the eyes are a lot lighter than the skin obviously but I still need to make them of a little bit a little bit darker value than actual white uh, than actual white or ivory color pencil that I would sometimes use and as I'm moving my way down the rest of the left side of the face I'm using a combination of those brownish and reddish tones for the shadow side and then putting some lighter orangey colors on top. Um, right now I'm not too worried about some of the smaller details like the uh, exact shape of the eye and all of the eyelashes and things like that. I will refine those details a bit later. Um, moving on to the mouth and the lips. I'm going to use a bit more of the reddish tones here and combine them with the other colors that I use for the rest of the skin but first I'm going to put down some more of these reddish tones and I have some of the uh, slightly brighter reds and some of the duller ones like for example Venetian red is one of the duller tones I'm going to use here and I'm even going to use some browns and even a touch of black here and there for some of the darker bits once again I have no problem using black uh, for the darker areas of my portrait in fact I highly recommend it even though a lot of artists would would really frown uh, frown on that but I don't really 
have a problem with using black. Uh, I have some really dark blacks, uh, like I previously explained, uh, in addition to the Faber-Castell black colored pencil. I also use the Kohino Silky black pencils, which are a little bit darker in my experience. I'm doing the other eye, putting down the pupil and the catch light and then working on the rest of the iris and then the, the rest of the eyeball. Notice that I'm adding touches of orange color to both the pupils and the rest of the eye because I want to stay consistent uh, with the lighting, with the tones that prevail in this scene and they're kind of warm and yellowish and orangey so I'm putting those tones even in some of the places where you uh, wouldn't really expect to see them now this transition between the nose and the forehead and the eyebrow area is very important it's going to take a while for me to get it to look right um, so I have to pay attention to how much value I'm using in different parts of the face because ultimately it is this range of value that helps you create an illusion of shape notice how every time I put down some of these darker orange and before that I put down some darker brownish tones first and then I put some lighter yellowish orange colors on top of that I think that working from dark to light is just a more natural way of working in most cases. Uh, of course sometimes you will choose to work the other way around and one of the important things about learning to work on this uh, with this medium is understanding or learning uh, when to work from dark to light and when to work from light to dark and how uh, how the pencils actually interact with the surface or the the medium that you're using because uh, uh, when I started experimenting with sand paper I immediately realized that there were a lot of things that colored pencils can do on this surface that they can't really do on regular paper and at first um, uh, there were some ugly attempts but I think I'm actually getting the hang of it and now that I'm going to be doing this series of colored pencil portraits on sanded paper uh, this will really be an opportunity for me to to really get to know this surface and how how colored pencils work on it just reinforcing some of the highlights on the forehead and I even added some touches of ivory colored pencil which is like a very light color almost white but I use that sparingly because I want to retain that range of value on the face I want to use the lightest lights and the darkest darks sparingly you can see how the shape of the face is starting to starting to appear as I'm increasing the range of value and as I'm defining the relationships between lighter and darker areas so a few more words about the movie and the reference as I've already mentioned uh, Lady Hawk is the movie and uh, it's like a fantasy movie it's about um, a man and a woman the man turns into a wolf at night and has human form by day and the woman has human form by night and she turns into a hawk by day so they never really get to meet in human form it's an interesting idea and I thought that it was an entertaining movie It's kind of forgotten now, I suppose, but if you have if you ever have an opportunity, I think you should watch it. I think it's a it's a pretty good movie. 
Um, it's kind of like a, a sword and magic type of a movie, if you will. One of Michelle Pfeiffer's early roles. And uh, once again, I'm not really uh, just, just trying to uh, just trying to correct the shape of the mouth a little bit because uh, she has a, she was probably best known for her sensual lips, so I, I want to get that part to look right. Um, I'm not really a fan of short hair on women, but but I like this reference photo and. Uh, Oh, and I like the, the interesting colors and uh, that's why I picked it over the references from the Scarface movie. So I'm going to be doing a, a series of interesting portraits and I honestly don't even know which one is going to be next. Um, but even though they are on a smaller format because they are so detailed and because I'm still experimenting with this medium uh, they are time consuming for me so each and every one of them will probably take no less than three hours and the size of the paper I don't know the exact size but it's about nine inches in height and about five inches in width I think. Uh, you can see how the colors are actually starting to look a bit more natural now. Now it's actually starting to look like a face uh, and it's starting to look a little bit more like actual skin because at first uh, those uh, really warm reddish and orange tones were a little bit scary even for me I uh, there was a point at which I wasn't really sure what I was doing but I examined my reference photo first I examined the colors and I uh, I think I had a pretty good idea about which colors I was going to use but when I complete the rest of the scene I think it's going to make a lot more sense and I'm also going to have to add some touches of that warmer color on top of her head on the hair as well just to stay consistent with the uh, with the overall atmosphere with the overall lighting of the portrait I'm just refining some of the details of her face and putting down some finishing touches there before I move on to the rest of the hair and and the background now here on the hair as you can see I like to put in these larger darker areas first to, to break the hair into smaller segments it makes my job a lot easier to work that way and it's also uh, it also makes the color of the hair look more natural when I first define the darker areas and then I stack the lighter colors on top it really looks like the lighter hairs or, or group, groups of lighter hair are uh, kind of coming out of the shadow because they're sticking out uh, so the background on this side the background on the right side is going to be a bit darker and uh, I'm kind of experimenting uh, with uh, some lighter tones on the top part of her head, on the top of her head, on the, on, on the hair at the top trying to see which colors would look good and how I can make the hair at the top stand out against the background I went back in to make some adjustments on the face as well I'm going to be doing that because uh, there are always some smaller details that you can fix but right now I'm focusing on the right side of the drawing and uh, on the background and cleaning up some of the edges around the face and the head just to make sure that I have a nice clean contrast between the main subject and the background 
I'm going to do, I'm going to do the ear now, or uh, the the part of the ear that we can actually see. Again, a combination with some a combination of some brownish and orange, and some yellowish orange for the lighter bits. You can see how those uh, yellowish details make the cheekbones stand out. They really make them look three-dimensional and Michel Pfeiffer really has those interesting prominent, uh, prominent cheekbones. So creating that contrast, uh, uh, that nice range between the darker tones in the cheek area and, uh, and the eye socket area and those lighter tones, those uh, yellowish tones on the cheekbone itself, that was very important to achieve a more three-dimensional appearance of the face. Now I'm going to be working my way down, working on the neck, using that burnt sienna for some of the darker bits first, for the shadow areas of the neck, and then going over that with some more of the reddish stones, and then working from those darker areas to the lighter areas by using lighter and lighter pencils. Basically repeating the same process that I did when I worked on the face. Every now and then I will also use um, blending tools just to push the pigment around a little bit because uh, that makes it a little bit easier to cover to cover uh, all of the background color of the pan paper that I'm using but like I said the best way to blend and layer is to actually layer lighter pencils on top of the dark ones in this case there will be some lighter areas on the neck but um, the neck overall will be a little bit darker than the face itself obviously because it's in the shadow it's uh, further away from the light source I just made some minor adjustments to the area above the upper lip and to the mouth itself <coughs> now I'm going to draw some lighter bits on the neck to make the neck a bit more three-dimensional Once again, I have to remind you to interact, give me a like, subscribe, comment on my videos. And of course, if you like drawing yourself, and if you want to see more content, if you want to see longer tutorials, real-time videos, you should check out my Patreon. Moving on to her clothes and I'm defining the shadow areas first using the black colored pencil and then going over that on top of that with some reds, doing a bit of blending, defining the edges a bit better so that we have a clean edge between, the, between her shoulders and the background, trying to blend those uh, darker areas on her shirt or her gown, whatever it is and create some natural transitions towards the lighter areas so that those folds in the clothes would look more natural. I'm kind of going over this part a little bit faster because it's less interesting than the portrait itself. Doing a bit more blending and a bit more refining. Adding a few shadows here and there using a black colored pencil. And finally, the drawing is almost finished. I'm going to put my signature in the lower left corner here, where it won't bother anybody, hopefully. And as a final touch, I'm just going to add some slightly warmer and more reddish tones on the top of her hair here to make that part look a bit warmer and a bit more consistent with the overall lighting. So 
So an interesting portrait and somewhat challenging in terms of the selection of colors. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the drawing process. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye for now.